Hello everyone. In this, uh, in this last lecture of DC-DC converter and power electronics, we will be learning about how filter capacitors can be used to decrease the ripple voltage and how we can design the filter capacitors to uh, to make the output voltage uh, ripple up to a certain point, up to a specified point. Before we move on to the discussion of filter capacitor, firstly we have to just look at the value of the current to the inductor. The current to the inductor follows this kind of zigzag patterns that is in one half of the cycle it rises, in the other half it falls. This zigzag pattern will uh, will create a, a will, will have a mean value here. So this current through the inductor will have a DC part which is fixed and will have an AC part and adding these two DC part and AC, AC part will give our total inductor current and this uh, in case of any converter we have a converter the output is connected to a resistor and a cap filter capacitor. The DC part passes through the resistor and the AC part passes through filter capacitor and as a result this filter capacitor can be used to decrease the chain decrease del IL and in the same way it in del IL or it can be used to decrease del I output it, and by doing so it decreases the voltage ripple or the uh, changes in voltage levels at the output. So before we move on to design part of it let us remember some very easy equations that we have learned in our uh, higher secondaries. Uh, Q is equal to C into V that is a charge to a conductor is equal to the capacitance into the times the voltage. Now if we if we differentiate them we get dq is equal to c into dv we have considered c is constant. Again we know q is equal to i into t where i is current and t is time so by differentiating we get uh, q is equal to i dt. Now if you what happens if you uh, from this expression we can say what happens if you want to measure the amount of charge stored. In case of output like this, if we consider the AC part of the output like this, we can see at one half charge is stored and in the other half that ch that charge is given away or discharged. As a result, if we, since this axis is time and this axis is current, if we just measure this part of it, that is uh, the area of this part we will get the charge stored in the half part, uh, half cycle of it. This technique will be used in order to determine the charge store or the uh, uh, and eventually we will be able to find out the value of the capacitance that will give, the, uh, give us the perfect output or the desired output. So now let us look at buck converter. In case of buck converter, this is the, uh, in case of buck converter we know that IL is equal to I output. For all the cases, I input, uh, I output is equal to the inductor current. So the AC part of it, AC part of the output current looks kind of like this, where this is zero. It goes up and uh, and now, and area of this part will give us the total charge of it. So if you want to measure the total charge dQ, we have to measure the area of A, B, C is equal to area of a B C area of triangle A B C. So D Q is equal to we know area of a triangle is half into base. What will the base be from B to C? This is half cycle. So base would be T by 2 into height. What would height be? Height or altitude, whatever we want to say. Hi height will be we can see if the total is del IL, height would be half of del IL half delta i l now this half is there is equal into 1 by 2 f into uh, we know del i l for case of buck converter uh, we had used this v naught by l 1 minus d t if you remember it from the inductor calculation and we can write dq is equal to c dv not why dv not because the voltage across the capacitor is v not from there we can find dv not divided by v not 
we are considering this v naught we are bringing it here is equal to we can say uh, 1 minus d divided by 2 to the 4 sorry we have missed a half here so 8 uh, l c f square f square comes from this f and this t f square so we get dv naught by v naught is equal to 1 minus g divided by 8 l c f square this is our expression now dv naught by v naught this this parameter is called ripple voltage this parameter is ripple voltage so if we are uh, if we want to design a buck converter we will be told that uh, design a buck converter for which ripple voltage is 0 0.01 volts that is dv naught by v naught will be 0 0.01 volts for that case we have already learned the calculation of inductor will uh, will apply that calculation and we know all the duty cycles and frequency so we can well we get the value of filter capacitor necessary to get this ripple voltage that's what, that's how we can design the filter capacitor of the circuit now if we want to design for boost converter what we have to do we have to again look at the output current in case of boost converter inductor current is equal to input current when the switch is on and inductor current is equal to output current when the switch is off so if this is the inductor current this becomes the output current only this region of it here the output current is zero because no current flows to the inverter uh, inductor so if the average value of the output current is equal to i naught then we will get uh, a graph similar to this if we consider the ac part ac part would be total current minus i naught so here we will get minus i naught and and thus will uh, this this curve will be the ac part of it so again th in this cycle the charge is stored and in this cycle it is discharged since the amount of charge stored has to be equal to amount of charge uh, discharge we can calculate with any part of the cycle we are calculating with this part for you for an easier uh, calculation so now we can see that uh, dq is equal to area of this rectangle area of this rectangle would be breadth uh, breadth into height the height of it uh, uh, would be i naught and the breadth of it would be tt because the switch uh, was on during the on time this whole thing happened so this is the area of the rectangle if this is the area of the rectangle we can say that cdv output is equal to v output by r dt from this we get dv output divided by v output is equal to uh, d by rcf using this expression we can actually calculate the ripple voltage and if you are given the ripple voltage and we are told to design the boost converter we will be able to calculate the filter capacity now once we have learned the uh, learned the calculations of buck and boost every other converter becomes very easy why is that so this is because i output will be equal to i l for the entire circuit uh, entire cycle in some key, uh, in some inver in some converters and in other converters i will output is equal to i l for one half of the cycle If I output is equal to IL for entire circle, we'll be following the process similar to buck. If output I output is equal to IL for one half of the cycle, will be the process will follow the process similar to boost. So when we are considering the buck boost converter, IL is equal to I input when the switch is on, IL is equal to I output when the switch is off. So as a result, the output current is equal to the inductor current current to the inductor only in half half cycle so we'll uh, follow the procedure similar to boost so the wave shape is also similar and we have this area to consider dq is equal to this area would be i naught dt similarly we get dq is equal to c dv naught 
is equal to v naught by r d d by f. From this we get d v naught by v naught is equal to d by r c f. This is the equation of ripple voltage. The equation of ripple voltage is similar to that case of boost converter. Now let us calculate the filter capacitor for chuck converter. For chuck converter we can see that uh, the output current is equal to current to the inductor L2 when the switch is on and also when the switch is off the output current is equal to current to the inductor L2. For example if this is IL2 this will be the output current but only the AC part of it because here we have zero. So since the output current is equal to inverter uh, inductor current for the entire cycle we will be considering the boost uh, uh, considering the process similar to that of buck so we will get dq is equal to this area half into t by 2 into half l i l 2 that is 1 by 8 f into del i l 2 is v naught by l 2 v naught by L2 1 minus D into T from there we get uh, this is DQ is equal to C D V output from where we get D V output by V output is equal to 1 minus D divided by 8 F L2 8 F square L2 C this is the equation of ripple voltage which is very similar to that we obtained for buck operation now in case of SEPIC converter also we can see that uh, I output is equal uh, I output is equal to the current to the inductor only when the switch is off. When the switch is on, uh, when the switch is on I output is zero. And as a result, if this is the current to the inductor I L2, we get this as I output. And similarly we can follow the process of boost here. So our dq would be equal to i output into dt. So dq we can write c d v naught is equal to v naught by r into d by f. From that we write d v naught by v naught is equal to d by r c f. So this is the equation of ripple voltage. By following these equations. We can actually measure the uh, we can actually measure the uh, uh, ripple voltage mathematically, and we can also if the ripple voltage is given, we can also calculate the value of capacitance, filter capacitance that will sat satisfy our operation. Uh, this has been the last lecture of DC DC converter. Uh, yeah, after this, we uh, if you notice, I haven't talked about the uh, talked about the filter capacitor design of DC zeta converter and that uh, you have to do as assignments. Uh, that's that's it for DC DC converters. We'll be moving to other power electronic circuits in our next lectures. Thank you.